Hey there Luma, this is the waffle stitch blanket pattern and I'm Denise from LumaHat.com. So happy to bring you this beautiful blanket with fabric that looks great on the front side as well as the reverse even though it looks a bit different. Now to make this project you will need any blanket or afghan loom and I'll explain more later. You also need 1350 yards of bulky yarn, a loom hook, a crochet hook or a needle, scissors and optional stitch markers. If you happen to want the written pattern visit lumahad.store. The loom that I'm going to use uh, is sometimes used as a double rack. It is an S loom also known as an infinity loom. I'm going to use mine single rack which means I will only use one side of it at a time and I've marked mine so I'm going to come around like this and it's going to go my fabric is going to go completely around and do that kind of like that loop-de-loop -loop and then end on one side. Now to be able to keep my stitch pattern correct I'm using these um, stitch markers they are 10 millimeters for this loom right here and I'm using these metal rings as my start and end markers so that's my edge right there and then the stitch pattern is three pegs so every third peg I'm putting a band marker these are like little tiny rubber bands they're made by rainbow loom and I put them as you can see every third and that's going to help me stay on track with the stitch pattern you could do the same thing so this is where I end which is my other edge you need two edges one at the beginning and one at the end one extra stitch and then this one is one that I'm not going to use that's why I put that marker there because I don't want to make a mistake and close my pattern so one empty peg before the cast on let me go over a few things in case you want to customize to your knitting loom or to a different size from what I have. You have to keep in mind that the stitch pattern needs three pegs and four rows plus you have two pegs for edges. Approximately every five pegs is going to give you two inches in width. My project is 55 inches. And approximately every seven rows you knit will give you two inches in length. My project is 65 inches in length. So you will customize and uh, adjust appropriately. All right, I say we're ready for the cast on. And in my particular case, I'm going to e-wrap cast on 137 pegs. I have a single strand of my bulky yarn and I'm going to attach it to this uh, peg that I'm not going to be using. I'm going to make a simple knot. You can make a slip knot if you feel more comfortable. And again, I it's a good idea to keep one empty peg at a minimum so that you don't end up sewing, um, knitting a tube. All right, get your uh, strand of yarn and wrap all of your pegs. This is the cast on and like I said I am going to be using 137 of my 138 pegs. In your case you're going to use according to your knitting loom if you have 20 pegs then you need to work out the three peg stitch plus the two edges. So mark your looms is going to make doing this figuring out how many you need a lot easier. So just keep going until you've wrapped all of your pegs once you're done wrapping all of your pegs you're going to turn around because we're going in the opposite direction we're knitting flat go ahead and knit off that last peg in my case it's peg 137 and I'm going to turn around and I am going to wrap that peg one more time I'm going again in that opposite direction and then I'm going to start wrapping my pegs and knitting off now some people will wrap all of their pegs and then knit off that's going to make it really tight and really difficult for you to knit off so i don't recommend that you do that you can if you want to some folks use that 
pen but uh, I don't I prefer to just knit uh, wrap three four five of them and then knit off and continue until I'm done once you finish with the cast on you're ready for row one and here we're going to slip that first stitch for a nice neat edge and then e-wrap knit all of the next of pegs we're just going to knit the row using the e-wrap version of the knit stitch so take your working yarn and turn around because we're knitting flat you're going to ignore that first peg because you're slipping and wrap the next peg take the bottom loop over the top and knit off that's your e-wrap what you've been doing you guys are basically experts with your e-wrap at this point and like i said just wrap a few of them and knit off and as you guys continue knitting i want to take a moment to say thank you to carol maple from promiselearningatl.com penny pitchard barbara ledger bob urquhart and joanne claybor for covering the cost of closed captioning this video for us once again guys thank you so much for your generosity we really appreciate it lots of love once you knit off that last peg you're done with row one and you're ready then to turn in the opposite direction and you can already have your yarn ready for row two where you're going to slip that first stitch and then purl the row until the last stitch and then you're going to e-wrap that last one so here we are we slipped that first peg right here and now we're ready to purl and for that you're going to put your yarn under the existing loop and with your hook from the top scoop up to create a new loop take the old one off put the new one on and pull let's do that again you're going to take the working yarn and put it under the existing loop and you're going to take your hook and with that very tip you're going to go down from the top and scoop up that working yarn to create a new loop and once you have that new loop you're going to take the 16 loop off the peg and put the new loop on and pull to tighten the stitch all right let's go ahead and keep going you need to do a full row of purl st stitches once you end you're on that last peg you're going to knit the peg and I hope now you're seeing that there is a pattern that every time you turn to start a new row you slip and then at the end right here at the end of the row you always have a knit stitch so here I am on that um, reaching that last peg right here which is peg one and I'm gonna wrap that peg to e-wrap it I've purled all the other ones this last one I'm going to e-wrap and now I turn around because I'm ready for row three where I'm going to slip that first stitch and then I'm going to e-wrap two and purl one until the last stitch and then I'm going to e-wrap that last one you got it so I've turned around I slipped the first stitch because I want a nice edge right so I skipped it and now I'm ready to do two e-wraps in a row so wrap wrap Take the bottom loop over the top and knit off. Take the working yarn and put it under the existing loop because you're going to do one purl stitch. Scoop it up and create a new loop. Take the existing loop off the peg and put the new loop on and pull the working yarn to tighten that stitch. That's the three stitch pattern. You're going to repeat it. So wrap the next two pegs. You can do them one at a time like I'm doing here wrapping it off wrap and knit off and then one purl stitch so that's the pattern you're going to continue to repeat those three stitches until you get to the end of the row so i want to show you the last repeat of this row where i'm doing two e-wraps and then a purl stitch and it says to continue to do that until the last stitch here's the last stitch I'm gonna wrap it and knit off for an e-wrap now I go off screen it's okay because you guys know how to do the e-wrap so no biggie and no panic 
And I'm going to turn around because now I'm ready to do row four. And for row four, as always, I'm going to slip that first stitch. And then the three peg pattern is two E wraps and a pearl. And I'm going to do that until I get to the last stitch. And then I'm going to E wrap. All right. So here I am. I slipped that first stitch. I'm going to do a pearl stitch. So put the yarn under, scoop up, create a new loop, take the old one off, put the new one on and pull. And then I'm going to do two E wraps. Because remember the pattern is one pearl and two E wraps. And I'm going to continue to do that until the end of the row. Correct? All right. So I'm going to do continue here. Here's another just in case. One pearl, two E wraps. And you see my stitch markers allow me to stay on track with that pattern. And once I reach the last stitch, uh, I, I did a knit stitch and now I'm going to go ahead and take the knot off the anchor peg. I'm using that as my anchor peg because I don't need it anymore. My yarn is now secure and uh, I can even take that uh, rubber band off of that peg and you could put something else to mark it if you want or just leave it like that. It's a blank stitch. You'll thank me for it. Now you're ready for rows five through 220 where you're going to repeat rows one through four 45 more times or as many times as you need uh, to reach your desired length. If you don't understand what I mean by repeat rows one through four, I want to give you a visual. And here you see that five, six, seven, and eight look exactly like one four. That's one repeat. Then nine, 10, 11, 12, that's a second repeat. And 13, 14, 15, 16 is another repeat. You keep doing that until you've reached your desired length. By the way, you're going to run out of yarn as you knit. So I wanted to show you real quick what I do. I get um, a long enough tail so about uh, I don't know two three inches and then I get another one but I make sure that my uh, stitch is nice and tight and I try to get as close to the peg as I can and then I wrap one around the other and I do a basic knot that's my first knot and then I'm going to do a second knot make sure that your strands are long enough so that when you weave them in you can weave them in easily and they'll secure well so don't leave short ones leave long one and then you can keep knitting try to do this change of um, adding more yarn when you need to add more yarn when you're doing a knit stitch promise it's going to be much easier all right now the last row which for me is row 221 we're going to do a slip one and then just e-wrap the row so super easy a great row to end with right so here i am i'm going to wrap i slip that first stitch as always when you turn around and you're ready to start the row you're always slipping a stitch you do the stitch pattern and then you are always ending um, with a knit stitch. So I'm doing this row of knit stitches, which for me is row 221 because I wanted a, a length of 65 inches and that's what I got. Um, it's good to measure as you knit to figure out when you've reached your desired length. All right, Luma, yay, 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 yay. It's time for cast off, yay! We are going to do a modified version of the basic bind off of all your pegs. All right, so bind off is done over two pegs. Here are my first two pegs. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap both pegs. So E-wrap peg one and peg two. So wrap and take bottom loop over the top, knit off. And you know, this yarn splits. So of course it had to split for me here. And then I'm going to wrap that second peg and take the bottom loop over the top and knit off. Then I'm gonna take the loop off of that second peg we're going to call peg two take the loop off of it and i'm going to take it over and put it on peg one over the existing loop 
Then I take the bottom loop over the top and I knit off. And after I do that, I'm gonna take my hook and take that loop off what we are calling peg one. And I'm gonna move that loop over to peg two. Now, that was our first cast off. That peg one is done. We've cast off one peg. You see, it doesn't have a loop. That one is done. And now we have a new pegs one and two right here. This time and for the next four pegs, we're just gonna wrap the second one. So I wrap peg two, I take the bottom loop over the top and knit off. And then I'm gonna take that loop that is on our peg two and I'm going to move it over to our new peg one right over the existing loop, tighten that stitch, take the bottom loop over the top, and I'm gonna knit off. And then I'm gonna take the loop that is on that peg, that peg one, and I'm gonna move it over and place it on the second peg. And now that peg has been cast off. And so now I have two pegs that I've done. The next set, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to wrap only the second peg. Remember, now we have a new peg one and two. So our new peg two, I wrap, I knit off, and I take the loop off that peg, and I move it over to peg one, and then I'm gonna knit off and move that, tighten the stitch, and then move that stitch from peg one to two. Now, I'm gonna ask you that even if you know how to do this, uh, basic bind off that you stay with me because I need to bind off five pegs to show you how I modify the basic bind off. This is what I'm going to do after every five pegs. So now we did three. We need to do two more before I can do that modification, right? So I'm doing the next one and two. Now once I've done the five pegs, the way I modify this is that I'm gonna take these two that are next, and just like before, well first look how nice that modified, uh, that basic bind off works. All right, so here's my modification. I'm going to this time wrap both pegs one and two, just like I did at the beginning. I'm wrapping them both, I knit them off, and then I'm gonna take the loop off of peg two, move it over to peg one, then knit off. Well, first I tighten that stitch and then I'm going to knit off. And once I knit off, I'm gonna take the loop from that peg one and I'm gonna move it over to peg two. Okay, so that was peg number five. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bind off five more pegs using the regular, right? It's these two. This time, I'm only gonna wrap peg two. So I'm gonna only wrap peg two until I've done five more pegs. Hopefully this is not confusing to you. So let me just review it real quick. I start by wrapping both pegs. I knit off, I take the loop off one, put it uh, two, put it on one and knit that one off, right? And then for the next four pegs, I'm only wrapping peg two. After I've cast off five pegs, I modify again. And what does modify mean? It means that you're going to wrap both pegs one and two instead of only wrapping peg two. All right, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, I wanna give you just a little suggestion. I'm using these little black rings right here to show me where I left off. And then I'm gonna count from there to the fifth one so I know where to do my modification. It's just hard for me to keep up with things and this makes it so much easier. For those of you that need to look at this just a few more times, I'm gonna let you watch this for one minute while I play you a happy little tune.
Here's my last two pegs. I'm going to uh, knit off two, move it over to one, knit it off, and then pull on it, get my scissors. I'm gonna leave a long tail, and I'm gonna cut my working yarn, and then I'm gonna take the yarn and pull on it until it completely comes out of the little hole, and that's it, and my blanket is done. This is how beautiful the cast off looks. It's a tight cast off, which is why you need to modify. The next thing we're gonna do is to weave in the ends because you're gonna have lots of ends to weave in. All right, so I'm gonna use this rug hook right here and I have some on the website at lumahat.store. You can also use a crochet hook or even a needle. I don't suggest the needle but if that's all you have, you can use it. This is the reason I like this hook right here. You see how it grabs it and I can easily pull it through. It has that little flap right there that secures it so that I can pull it um, real easy. And with the way that this um, yarn splits, that is super helpful and especially because there's so much to do. But again, if you have a crochet hook, it works great. Just make sure that the crochet hook you're going to use is the correct size. Crochet hooks come in many sizes. And remember that you are using bulky yarn and so you need the right hook. I believe even this one is not, um, really the best one i probably should have gotten one that was a bit bigger but um, i'm using this one because of the color i wanted you to be able to see what i was doing and my other bigger hook is actually white so it wasn't going to show up so well you can again also use a needle if you have a yarn needle to weave in your ends um, just make sure that you get them uh, nice and tucked in the last thing I did to my blanket was to attach fringes because it makes it look so elegant and I really love it. Um, I cut up strips of, I believe these are 14 inches because I wanted it to be really long. And I fold them in half. You take your crochet hook, put it through one of those V loops, loops from your cast on. I did the cast on because they're kind of loose. And you feed the loop from the top. And then you feed the two like little legs through that uh, where you fold it. And then you have to, if you're using the same yarn I'm using, you're going to have to make little knots on the bottom. Otherwise, it unravels. And it doesn't look bad. It just may not look the way you want it. And I felt like the little knots actually added to the look of the fringes. There you go. That's it. That's how I made them. Just add them until you've had enough. All right, guys, that's it. That's the blanket. That's everything I did. I hope you really love this project as much as I do. Blankets are super special gifts. So if you did like it, remember to like and more importantly, share. Stop by the store. Make sure you sign up for the newsletter. You'll get lots of goodies. It's at lumahat.store. Until next time when you come back and loom with me.